you, Brian? Good. How are you? How are you? Brian Smith from Lexus. He's in charge of uh, all the marketing operations for Lexus. So, first of all, thank you for having us here in Sevilla, in Spain. Mm, it's been wonderful. For this uh, very special event. I mean, this is a very special car for Lexus. Oh, yeah. And uh, a lot of people have been waiting for it uh, for a long time. Actually, the prototype of this debuted what, 2012? Premiered actually in 2011, but yes, uh, in, tw in, in Detroit. First of all, don't adjust your cameras, don't think we're like flipping the image. This is a right-hand side car. And I guess uh, Lexus being now a global a, a global uh, car manufacturer has to make cars for markets like Australia, the UK, and so, so and so, right? Exactly. We're actually, you know, after starting in just the US in 27 years ago, yeah. in 1989, Lexus is now sold in 90 countries around the world. So you're right, very, very diverse product lineup. This is uh, the L. C500, and this is the one as you heard when I turned on the engine. This is the BA. Yes. Uh, great, great sound, great, great uh, yeah. power. But Lexus also is uh, starting a, like, I guess, a new trend with this car, representing the same car, exactly the same car. It looks the same, but it has two power trains, right? Yeah, it has this in a brand new multi stage hybrid. First vehicle in our in the entire Lexus lineup, for, really first in the industry to offer this kind of technology. And it's really changed the perception of hybrid. You had a chance to drive it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I actually drove both. I drove this one coming in from Sevilla here to Circuito Monte Blanco, and then both on the track. And they're like completely different cars. Yeah. I mean, like that's a very different experience on each of them. I mean, great in both cases, but completely different. And that's I guess that's like the philosophy that I guess that Lexus is trying to 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 offer to the to the customers, like two completely different cars, two completely different flavors. Well, definitely two different flavors. I, I think the um, you know the essence of LC is consistent between the two. Yeah. What I think is really different is that the hybrid, traditionally people would be looking at a hybrid for high fuel efficiency. Yeah. The multi-stage hybrid allows you to get great fuel efficiency, but a much more sporty driving experience as you found. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the whole concept of, of the LC 500, starting with the design. And I heard you in your presentation earlier today that uh, Lexus never wants to hear boring and Lexus in the same phrase anymore again. And that's like, I, I really admire that, that yeah. you recognize that because for a while, your cars have been fantastic in many aspects, but some people didn't think the design was up there to the competition maybe. Right, I think the, um, the new face of Lexus was launched with the new GS back in 2013, yeah. which was the first of our spindle grills, much more expressive styling. And you've seen that on each of the new model launches since then. I think LC just takes it up another notch to a much more exciting, the complete package of this car, which as you heard, was built on a brand new global architecture. So all new from the ground up. And it's really it really shows in the way the car drives, the way it looks, the, the overall driving dynamics are, are uh, really unparalleled. Yeah, in our and mind. something that also uh, has caught the attention of uh, first the media, I guess, and then like the general public is that the prototype, the concept car that we saw in 2011, Pretty close to, the, I mean, the production car is pretty close to the, the, the prototype, which is rare also in the industry. It's very rare, and I think uh, when, they, when the LFLC concept car was originally designed, it was purely a design exercise, yeah. right? It was to show how passionate could Lexus make the, the overall design of an exterior body. Never the thought that we could actually build that car. It was very low, very wide, which yeah. of course made it exciting to look at. But I think the challenge for the engineering team was how, how close could they actually make that car um, to the to the um, original concept. And I hope you agree, this is really close. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's really, really close. And like, not only from the exterior, exterior, uh, it looks great, but also, I mean, it really has got my attention how. Yeah. The details inside, everything. I mean, like the, the door panels are like so beautiful, yeah. and like the shapes of it, every material is like high quality. You can feel it. Yeah, thank you. And then this is going to be moving forward. This is going to be kind of the philosophy of Lexus with the rest of the lineup. Yeah, I think we always, even the new RX, which for in the United States yeah. and in and, and here is really the number one volume vehicle for Lexus. NX in the sport utilities are just growing everywhere in the world. Um, both of them have much more expressive styling than a traditional SUV. When we launched RX first, there were a number of traditional buyers who said, wow, that front end is massive. There's yeah. a, maybe too much style for me, but it's grown on people. And, and it's still, we're going to sell 100,000 of them in the U.S. It's still, uh, and the NX is now the number two volume vehicle in our lineup. It also has very expressive styling. So I think you're right to say that's really, this is the future. 
where the brand's gonna go. And now this car is gonna come up in the market uh, around summer 2017? Mm -hmm. Exactly, May is our hope, but you know, May, June would be the launch. And uh, we, I guess, since uh, as it happens with other cars, we don't know pricing or anything else yet? No, and we, you know, it'll price much closer to launch, but um, we've certainly been able to look at what the effective range is for the competitors in this segment, and they tend to run from about 90,000 to 120. Obviously, you can find some special editions that go over that, but our goal is to have LC very competitively priced against the competition, certainly within that range. Yeah. And speaking about competition, were there any models that you benchmarked this car against? I mean, they're like re really great cars in this segment. Yeah. And like, it seems that uh, since the economy and like all manufacturers are doing really well, that segment is expanding. And I, that's why also you, you created this car, right? Exactly. The, um, you know, the specific vehicles that I think our engineering team was benchmarking was clearly the BMW 6 Series. Um, I think the Jaguar F-Type, just from the pure, uh, you know, the, the visceral feel and sound yeah. of the engine, um, and certainly Mercedes SL. So those three cars, we had them on tracks as we got closer to starting to refine how this car was going to drive. Um, but in reality, the engineering team, when they were starting to look at paper performance specs, the 911 cropped up quite a bit. I think you heard the engineering team, uh, Sato-san, this morning say that the, the new 10-speed transmission in this car has shift times equal yeah. to one of the fastest transmissions, the Porsche. The yeah, famous PDK. Yeah, yeah. the famous PDK, um, in, in only two tenths of a second shift. And you hear it on the track, just whap, whap, whap. Yeah. So they've done an amazing job designing this new transmission. So there was a combination of the real best of the GT cars on a street and one of the best performing cars on a track in the 911. Yeah. And also, being a Lexus, I mean, we experienced in the drive from the hotel to here, which was uh, around an hour and a half, I mean, this can be really a comfortable car to drive every day, too. Yeah. That's really the, what I think was the, you know, the overall target, was get it great on a track, but make it something that you can just live with every day. Wow, this is close. <laughs> yeah. We're very narrow streets here in Sevilla, and we just with like, tractor went by, but I guess that's the way it is here. And uh, yeah. it's kind of uh, interesting to see how the access to this track yeah. is, because it's off, off the main road, but you have to go on the side road, which is really narrow, and... Uh, but anyway, that's, a, that's a almost story. like a foot, almost like a pedestrian bridge, right? Exactly. Here. So you know, the, the other thing I wanted to mention on what you described is um, one thing that our engineering teams have really focused on is the drive mode select, which, as you've been able to experience here, is it, it provides a real diverse range of performance feel. Yeah. So you can actually make the car nice and soft and comfortable. But that doesn't mean you're giving up anything. When you go to Sport Plus on the track, it really, really stiffens up the steering, uh, the overall suspension, even the throttle response. So I think that's been one of the keys to getting a car that's comfortable on a road, but still really good on the track. Yeah. And speaking about the, the mode selector here, this comes from the LFA. And obviously the LFA, which was a very limited production car, like 500 units, I believe. Yes, 550, uh, I think we ended with. And, uh, and so there are some cues of that car here, but like this is much more refined. I mean, I remember I had the opportunity to drive it. And this is like, uh, uh, obviously the LFA is like super sports car level, yeah. but yeah. this is like a, being a production car, a day-to-day -day car, and they can use still take it to the truck. Exactly. There's a, there's many of the design cues that came from LFA, but um, the multimeter sliding to open up the um, you know the full range of menus on the dash came right out of LFA, and um, I think there's a lot of the feel. But you're right, the LFA. I think it's a great. You can live with it compared to other supercars, and it yeah. drives great on a track. But there's no cup holders. There's no cruise control. <laughs> right. You wouldn't want to live with that every day driving, commuting to work. So this gives you a wonderful um, balance. Yeah, and as we were saying uh, before, like uh, the whole uh, range of customers are like demanding more and more in the, even the luxury cars that had pretty much everything. <laughs> Everybody wants more and I guess that's what you're doing now. Absolutely, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So um, again, uh, on sale around uh, May, June 2017. And uh, do you have any projections of uh, what, uh, what you expect to sell? Yeah, we, um, we have our sales target set at about 400 a month, and I think initially, you know, there's always a big pent-up demand. Yeah. Once you start putting this on the internet and, and we get the driving impressions out, 
Uh, we start to get a lot of people visiting dealers, going online, configuring cars, and so I think we'll, we'll, we'll exceed that initially, but you know, if it stabilizes there, that's a really good volume for us. Yeah, and uh, in these kind of cars, I guess you also want to keep it some kind of exclusive too, right? A little bit exclusive, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for this short drive here on the streets around uh, Circuito Monte Blanco, and yeah. uh, we're gonna complete the experience here on the track. So thank you very much again, and uh, hope to see you soon. And uh, congratulations, Lexus is doing great everywhere thank in the you, world now. Javier. You do a great job driving and talking and filming <laughs> at the same time. I've done it before. Thank you. Thank you.